Welcome to our fifth part in our series on the dumb book, What Most Religions Don't Tell You About the Bible. Chapter 5 in the dumb book is entitled God's Only Accepted Method of Payment. And we looked last week in chapter 4, which was entitled Birth Defect, at how that we're all born with sin, how the Bible tells us there is no non righteous, no not one. The Bible tells us all our righteousness is like filthy rags before the Lord. We've all sinned. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. We're all born with sin. But God is good. He's perfectly good. He's holy and he's just and he's righteous. And we're not good. Again, the Bible says there's none good. No, not one. We're not good, but God is, and, and that leaves a problem, it's a sin problem, it's a debt that needs paid. And God's only accepted method of payment, the Bible tells us in Romans 3.23 that the wages of sin is death. The Bible also says without the shedding of blood there can be no remission of sin. That's why the Old Testament uh, sacrificial system was in place. Not that it could permanently take away sin because it wasn't a perfect sacrifice, but that it was a picture of a sacrifice to come. And, and in fact, the Old Testament system was a rolling sacrifice. It had to keep going. It was a covering for sin, but it wasn't a full and final atoning for sin. So the Bible tells us that the, the ways of sin is death and, and we know that, that death entered in by one man, by, by Adam and sin came in. And when sin came in, as you read in Genesis, death followed. When you get into the beginning of Genesis, after the curse, we, 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 we read these repetitive words through Genesis. And he died, and he died, and he died, and he died. Death comes in because the wages of sin is death. The biblical worldview defines death as something very different than maybe your worldview. A lot of people's worldview, death is simply non-existence. But the biblical worldview really defines death and sums it up by one word, separation. Death is a separation of the body, the soul and the spirit. The Bible says that believers and the Apostle Paul talks about this in Corinthians, that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. That at death there's a separation of soul and spirit, and that your soul and, and spirit are eternal and they, they have to go somewhere. The Bible says those that have trusted in Christ for salvation go to be with the Lord, but those that don't go to wait the judgment to come that spoke about in Revelation. You see, death is separation. It's a separation from God. An eternal death is eternal separation from God. That's what we know as hell or, or the lake of fire in more uh, particular terms. See, at your death, there's going to be a separation. A separation of body, soul and spirit. And your soul and your spirit are either going to go to be with the Lord or they're going to go to await the eternal judgment of God. But the good news is there's a way to avoid that. But it has to be God's way. It has to be God's way as revealed in his holy, infallible, inerrant word. And God's only accepted method of payment is one that we could never pay in and of ourselves. Remember, God is good and we are not. And, and our lives are tainted by sin. All our works, all our righteousness is like filthy rags of what's sin. There's nothing we can bring to the bargaining table that's going to work. So how do we pay what we can't pay? Because there's a debt that's owed and God is good. He's a holy and righteous judge. He must judge sin. What are we to do to... Um, get out of the terrible trouble that we're in with this holy judge. Well, God did something. John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God made a way. It's Calvary's cross, where the Lord Jesus Christ took the wrath of God, 
paid the punishment so that if we believe in him and trust in him, have eternal life. Romans 6, 23. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So Christ's life was perfect. He was sinless. He never did wrong, not once. He never broke the law of God. He never transgressed the law. It could be never said of him that he was dead in trespasses and sins, as the Bible says about us. And Christ's life is the life that can give us life if we accept and trust him. Let me illustrate it for you like this. We live in the world of the credit report and, and the credit report is all important today, I guess, and moving on and in this uh, society where everything is digital and if you want to get a phone you need a good credit report if you want a bank account you need a good credit report if you uh, you want to get a, a car vehicle and hire purchase you need a good credit report if you want to get a mortgage you need a good credit report and the credit report is based on, on your life and how you've behaved in terms of if you've made the payments on time if you've done what's expected of you you haven't broke any terms of your agreement and uh, there's some people out there and you may be one of them that has a less than perfect credit report in fact you may have a poor credit report or a bad credit report and, and you find it hard to get accepted um, anywhere that you apply but for those that have never missed a payment that have a perfect credit report well they get accepted wherever they go they go to apply for a mortgage and they know based on their credit report that they'll get accepted they go to pay for a car on finance and they know that they'll get accepted and get favorable rates interest rates based on their perfect credit report but for those with a credit report that is not so good sometimes them applications can bring anxiety because you don't know the outcome you don't know what's going to happen and, and that's the way some people are going to be with God. They're going to try and get before God and produce their own credit report, not, not knowing if it's going to be accepted, not knowing if it's going to be good enough. And try and bargain with God. But we know that God is a holy and just and righteous judge. And he can't be bought and he can't be bargained with. But the good news is that on Calvary's cross, Jesus became our substitute, if you're willing to accept him, that actually his perfect life, his perfect credit report, can be your credit report. Imagine if you do have a bad credit report and, and somebody come along with a perfect credit report and said, here, you can have my report um, and you can have my score and I'll take yours. I'll take the bad one and you can have the one that gets you accepted wherever you apply. I mean, you jump at that chance, chance if you had a bad credit report. You grasp it with both hands and say, this is a new start. This is a new beginning. This is a, a, a new life for me in this world because now I have a perfect credit report that when I go and I apply for that car, I know I'm going to get it based on the credit report. But actually, that credit report's not mine. It belongs to another who did keep the payments, who did make them on time, who didn't break any of the terms and conditions. Who had, there was somebody else did that and I've benefited from it. We take that into spiritual terms and it's 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 a similar thing where our spiritual credit report before the Lord is bankrupt. Yes, we've done some good things, but we've broke his laws so many times. We've transgressed. We've got sin in our lives and we all have this. So we can't come before God and bargain based on some of the good things that we've done. No, he looks on our spiritual credit report and says we're dead in trespasses and sins. We're spiritually bankrupt and there's no way we can be accepted on the basis of that. Because if he is a holy and just and righteous God, he can never accept that. But he can't accept the perfect credit report. He can't accept that perfect spiritual credit report of perfect righteousness. But the only one that's ever had that type of report before God that walked this earth was the Lord Jesus Christ. The only one that's loved God as he should be loved every second of every minute that he was upon this earth was the Lord Jesus Christ. None of us have hit that mark 
We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. We have all failed in that. Our credit report spiritually is bankrupt before God. It is bad. But in Calvary's cross, there was one with a perfect report that was acceptable and pleasing to God, to the Heavenly Father, that became sin for us, took the punishment, paid the debt that we should pay, and as part of that transaction, as it were, a great substitution, the Lord is willing to give you his perfect spiritual credit report so that when you stand before God, he doesn't see your report that would never be accepted. He sees the report of his dear son that is always accepted. And our entry to eternal life the perfect bliss is based on that, nothing that we've done. That's why the Bible says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, lest any man should boast. It's the mercy and grace of God reaching down to us, and us reaching up with the hand of faith to accept that he did it because we could not. To accept that his life was given for ours. To accept that he was our substitute, the perfect Lamb of God, gave his life so that we might have his life credited to our account. And as a born again Christian, given that new life, we can stand with full assurity before God, knowing that it's not our works, it's not our life, it's not our spiritual credit report that's seen. It is the perfect report of the Lord Jesus Christ and based on his life, his report, we gain entry into heaven. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. See, that's what makes the Bible different all the other religions out there each and every one of them gives you no assurity that what you've done is enough that actually based on all those other systems it's a system of works it's you standing before God that divine holy one with your credit report and hoping that's enough Never knowing whether it's going to be accepted or rejected. Just like if you have a bad credit report and you apply for something online or you apply uh, at the local car dealers, you're not sure and you live in that state of not knowing whether it's going to be accepted. Christianity is not about what you can do. It's about what is done. The Lord Jesus Christ, when he was on the cross and he died, he cried out, it is finished. Tell the last day, paid in full. His perfect life, his perfect credit report will become yours when you accept him as saviour. So that when you stand before God, you know you're accepted because your report's perfect, because the Lord Jesus was perfect and his life was perfect and acceptable in the eyes of a holy and just God. On our entry into heaven, our entry to be with him forever, for eternity, is based upon Christ's work and not ours. That's the perfect assurance that only the born again Christian has. So I urge you this evening as you've listened to this, if you don't know Christ as your saviour, if you're trusting in your own credit report before him, think, think, what would you rather have? The bad and perfect credit report or the one that is absolutely perfect so that when you stand before the one that makes the judgment you know that you're accepted because of that perfect report that's what jesus did in calvary's cross for each and every one that would come unto him to believe him to trust in him to have his life credit to our account so when god looks on us he sees his only begotten son and his life, which is what guarantees us eternal life. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord.
I hope these thoughts have blessed you. I hope they've challenged you. I hope they've encouraged you. If you've got any questions, please do get in touch with us. And I hope you join with us next week as we continue on in our Done series, What Most Religions Don't Tell You About the Bible. God bless.